Hey everybody, this is Josh with Ruby the Rubicon and today we're going to talk about Ruby's tag along the honeypot. Please like, subscribe and share this video. Hey everyone. So a couple of months ago, I did a walkthrough, a raw walk, walkthrough video of our Avan cruise liner, the Honeypot. We've done, give or take, six or 7,000 Ks with it now. We've done a few trips, some with the family, some without. And uh, I just wanted to give an update video on what we do like, what we don't like, the modifications we've done to it. Uh, and we've also got a little something extra hiding behind it, but we'll get to that in a minute. So. If you enjoy our content, please do like, subscribe to the channel. We're currently trying to hit 200 subscribers. That would be really cool. So I'll turn the camera around and let's get into it. So we're here set up at Jugeong Showground. It's a pretty big area. Off the Murrumbidgee? Just off the Murrumbidgee River. My wife Stella's behind me. So we're camped just next to the show ring. And there's a pretty good view where we're set up. The river's just here. There's a car's been parked here since we pulled in. There's no one's been there. There's little access to the river down here and it is quite nice. There are quite a few people here, but it's fairly well spread out. Um, it's a nice little spot. The kids are inside, they'll say hi in a second, but I thought we'll do a quick walk around around the outside. So this is generally how we have it set up when we've got the family. Say hi to, hi to Stella, hi. my wife. Um, so we've got the Avan Cruise Liner, we've got the Tebs awning on the front. The Tebs awning, it is a bit involved to set up. Between the two of us, we can set it up in about 15 minutes, get it all pegged out, get the skirts in, get the wall on. We, so far, we've only ever set it up with two guy lines. We haven't ever needed more than two guy lines. We've had it in some reasonable winds. I don't know that I'd want to set it up in a situation it required all four. Um, but yeah, I mean, some people have commented on that. That's how we set it up. It works for us. And that's something I'll say, just because we set things up the way that we do, doesn't mean that you have to. Set your setup, figure out a way that works for you and then set your setup up in a way that works for you. Just because this is what works for us doesn't mean that it's what works for you. So I'll come around the outside. You can see here, I picked up a cheap diesel heater when we were in last in Melbourne with this. Um, I got that for 50 bucks on Marketplace, so pretty good buy. And we've just ducted it into the Annex. It does work reasonably well, but when we're heating the Annex, it does use a lot of fuel. There's, there's, there's no getting around that. If it was inside the van, it was recirculating the air inside the van, it wouldn't need to work as hard. It would use a lot less fuel. But when we're heating the Annex, it does use a lot of fuel. Now, that heater, that, that is just an installation heater inside a box. So what I'm probably going to do is gut it and install it inside the van at some stage. I'm just not sure exactly when. Um, it's currently sitting up on the ramps because the exhaust comes out from underneath and if you put it on the ground, it burns the grass. So we don't really want to do that. The next thing you'll probably notice, if I can get the sun glare off, is the solar panels. So we now have a 310 watt solar panel uh, across the back and that's the physically largest panel I could fit and then an 80 watt panel at the top for a total of 390 watts on the front. Now my charger that I have is limited to 20 amps, which means it'll only ever put out 300 watts on the big panel. So 380 watts peak charging. And it's important that you note that that's peak. It's very, it would be very, very rare that you would actually see the full 380 watts. Somewhere between 250 and 300 is pretty common. Coming around the front, we set a table up with our Weber. We find that if we're cooking for the kids, we need to bring this with us. We've got a Weber Baby Q. The stove inside is okay, but have the extra cooking capacity is, is really important. Um, usually I have this running on a separate gas bottle. I forgot to bring it with me, so I've just plumbed into the spare gas bottle. We've done a whole bunch of trips now. We are still on the original four and a half kilo gas bottle. I don't know how much gas it's got left in them, in it, uh, but 
we've done a whole bunch of trips and we still haven't gone through one gas bottle we are running the fridge on gas we are boiling the kettle we're running the hot water we have been having showers so we've been using quite a fair bit of gas and we've, we're still on the first gas bottle we've now had the van for for nearly four months so that's not too bad we also now have the dual car triple ensuite tent i will do a separate video on my thoughts on that the short version is this is a really cool thing i'm glad we bought it well worth spending the money it's not perfect but it works really well now you'll also notice on the apex of the roof i have an antenna so this van doubles as an office for me when we're on the road um, the industry that i work in i need to be on call 24 7 for work so that is hooked up to a fancy router in there that connects to my work so that i can work when we're on the road so that was a really important one i had a lot of questions about that it's a 5g antenna uh, we also have wi-fi in here and in fact the last trip we went on that was the only thing that had reception and everyone wanted to connect to the wi-fi so that they could get phone calls in and out so you know when you're off grid that sort of stuff helps so we've just got the drain pipe running out on the high, on the ground here. Um, the ground's fairly level here, so that's not draining perfectly, but it is working. Come around the other side, and we have our next thing, which is an XTM 300 watt solar blanket from BCF. Now, the charger that comes with this thing is absolutely rubbish. So I have that wired into our full Victron system, which I'll show you when we get inside and that hooks into that now i have only seen uh, a peak of about 220 watts off this panel again you're never going to see the peak numbers unless you're in perfect conditions and because these panels are black in full sun they're going to derate you, you just you, it's very rare that you're going to see the 300 watts now I've got here a demonstration of how we fill our water tanks up. So we have been using the, the Julka tent for showers. As I said, I'll do a separate review video of that. But when you're using showers, you go through a lot of water. We're at a site where we can fill up at a tap and then fill this up from a jerry can. Well, the question is, how do you fill up from a jerry can? So I've got a very simple setup here. I just have a hose going into the tank inlet, runs along the ground. And this is empty at the moment because I've just filled it up. And then I have these jerry cans on the back. So very simple. You put the hose on the bottom, on the tailgate of the Jeep. You open the valve, gravity feeds. When the breather overflows, you full. And we have two of these. Um, I am going to mount these on the back bumper for transport. I'll only ever be transporting these empty. Now on the back of the van, little upgrade, B sticker. If you're Estonian, you'll know what mesolane means. If you're not, Google it. You'll understand why there's a B on the back. Um, UHF name, just handy when you're trying to get in contact with people on the road. And now we come back around the other side. Again, Teb's awning. It's a good thing. It works really well for the kids. We don't bother setting it up when it's just my wife and I. But when we've got the kids, it's really important. All right, so we'll pop inside and I'll get the kids to show you their area. All right, so we're now in the annex. This is where the kids sleep mostly. They have a, we've got a table out here. The kids mostly sit on this table. They're doing drawing and stuff at the moment. The kids would like to show you their sleeping area. So what can you tell us about this, kids? Um, this is um, like... This is a bunk bed and slash when you can, you can actually pull it apart so you can fit it in a little bag. And when we're old enough, we can split it into two beds. Okay. And, we, and we've both got very comfy pillows. Yeah, okay. <laughs> so what have you got on the bed here? Is it just a stretcher or have you got something on top of it that you sleep on? We got something we, we got sleep a swag on mattress. Top. Yeah, we got a swag like mattress so we can stay comfy so who we don't... Um, so we can be warm in the night. Yeah. Now this works really well for the kids. Um, the inlet from the diesel heater at the moment is popping up in here and it does, it, it, it helps, it takes the edge off in here. It's not perfect, but um, when it gets cold, it does work quite well. So just walking around the van, we now have the, uh, we hang our rubbish bag up on the hook out here. That works quite well. Uh, we also use in here at night 
one of the Ryobi cordless bug zappers. These things are really cool. The four amp hour batteries run these for about six hours, seven hours. So I would like to get a bigger battery for it, but that will happen with time. It just helps keeps the bugs away from the kids at night. I mean, the, the NX does a pretty good job of keeping the bugs out, but you always get those tiny little sticky ones. This just makes sure that, that, that they're not a problem. We've got the Ryobi gooseneck light here that the kids use when they go out to the toilet around the back in the in the Julka tent. And I have a little power board that I've plugged on here that runs the Ryobi charger. And also I have a 240 volt light that clips on up here that is removable. Uh, I would like that to be 12 volt one, but it was what I could get in Bunnings when we were on a trip. Well, on our first trip, I needed something quickly that I could put up there that would just work, and I didn't have any access to 12 volts out here on that first trip. So 240 volt light for now, it works. With the battery and inverter set up, I'm not worried about it. When it's just my wife and I, we take that down. We find that this light is not enough to light up the NX on its own. Not much else has changed out here. This cupboard's open because this is where all the magic happens. So in here, we have our DC distribution system. Now, I always found that the van was a little bit nose heavy from factory. This has taken some of the weight off the nose, not enough to be a problem. Um, in, all in all, I'm sitting about 20 kilos lighter on the drawbar than I was when we bought it. So I've gone from, it, it was sitting at about 140 kilos on the drawbar. It's now sitting at about 120 and it hasn't affected the way that it tows. So basically we've got a Victron Lynx distributor to distribute the power. The two main battery cables are running over the top. My isolator and fuser are on the other side of the bed where the battery box is, and I'll show you that in a minute. We've got a Victron 1600 watt inverter. Now everybody I spoke to who didn't have a lot of experience with this stuff, if I'm being perfectly honest, said that that wouldn't be big enough to run the microwave. It is, it does, it works well. Um, don't let the naysayers tell you that it won't work because it does. We have fitted it and it works. The AC side basically interrupts the feed that's coming in and they've rewired the circuit breakers so that we've got a breaker on the inlet and then a breaker on the outlet of the, of the inverter. This, uh, this inverter is actually certified for full off-grid op applications, so it handles all of your the, the, the switching that's necessary in order to run a system full off-grid or be on-grid. As far as chargers are concerned, we have a 30 amp DC DC charger that comes from the van. 30 amp is a bit smaller than most, but it works just fine. We've never had an issue with DC DC charger not charging. Um, now all of my panels are on individual MPPTs and I do have a spare in here. Um, at the moment, the two 20 amp controllers, one's running the front panels, one is running the auxiliary panel, um, the external panel, and I have a 10 amp controller running the 80 watt panel on the front. Eventually, I'm gonna put 300 watts worth of solar on the rear side of the roof. And what will happen is that will get wired into the 20 amp controller here and the external feed will get wired into the 15 amp controller on the end here. I rarely see more than 200 watts off that solar blanket. So over paneling that controller with a 300 watt panel, I'm comfortable with because I will have sufficient solar on the roof. All right, um, now we'll move inside and we'll talk about what's changed inside the van. So not a lot really has changed inside here. I will get uh, Stella to come in and, and talk about a couple of things that we've done with the bed. But just for now, I'll show you what I've changed, the power stuff that I've changed. So one of the first things I've done is and this is a this is just a niceness thing. We've realigned these switches. So these were staggered, they were all over the place. And they looked really horrible. They, they looked really, really horrible. Let's try and cut down some of the glare there, because we've just got the, the sun's coming in through the window. They looked really, really horrible. The other thing is there was no way to turn the microwave off <laughs> without lifting the bed up. And that's a pain in the butt, if I'm being perfectly honest, to lift the bed up and put the bed down every time you want to um, want to turn the microwave on and off or turn the, the 240 volts for the hot water on and off. It was just a pain, it really was. So what I've done, or what this, my Sparky and I have done, is we've wired in two switches into the power points that are underneath the bed. Now one turns one power point on, or one of the, each of these turn the power points on and off. 
This is actually a, I think it's a Swift hot water switch. This originally had electric silk screening on here, but it rubbed off. I'm pretty not real happy with the quality of that. And this is just a double pole switch from Bunnings. Um, so that switch is one of the power points. That switch is the other. Switch that on, microwave comes on and switch that one on, the hot water comes on. Now the inverter will run the hot water, but it does smash it pretty hard. So we just run it on gas. If we're ever plugged in, the inverter will go into full bypass mode and then the inverter is not doing anything other than being a charger. So that's when we'll turn that on, heat hot water off the electricity. Now the management for the Victron system is over here. I would have liked to have put this controller in here, but with the new styling that Avan's put in here, the older models, this was just a big flat panel and the Color Control GX that I've got would have fitted over there. Unfortunately, it doesn't. So this is where I ended up settling on it. And you can see, uh, if I can get the pages to show up without the menu bar down the bottom. There we go. You can see here, this gives us a full overview of the system. So you can see right now, we're cranking about 235 watts of solar into the system. We're charging at 15 amps. The DC system's using about 25, 30 watts, and we currently got nothing coming off AC. There is a tiny bit coming off AC. I have a phone charger plugged in over the other side, but it's obviously not enough for the inverter to worry about it. The Color Control GX is an older unit. Um, there are a bunch of different ways that you can go about doing this. I use this because I got it. I got it really cheap. I would have liked to replace it with. Put, I would have liked to put in one of the more modern units, but I mean. I can't complain about the price that I got this for, so it's in here now and it's gonna stay. So, we'll come over, I'll lift the bed up and I'll show you the rest of the DC system under here. So again, all of the solar stuff is in here now, in this bin. The main DC cables run across and over to this side. Now this box is a little rougher than I'd like it to be, but it's legal and it's compliant. Inside that box, I have two 240 amp hour lithium batteries. This box does comply with the standards. It is fully sealed. It is dual vented externally in the bottom and in the side with vents that meet the requirements. I've mounted my shunt and my isolator and the fuse directly to the box. And you can see there, that's the only bit of exposed positive cable before the fuse. Um, that's the only bit of exposed positive cable before the fuse. Now, putting this box in did mean that I had to strip back some of the AVN wiring. I now have pulled all the excess cable that would just been shoved into the back by AVN out here. And I've put um, a couple of connectors on the trailer plug and also the the, the trailer wiring for the, for the lights and also the DC wiring because there's a DC line and the uh, marker lights and stuff come through three separate wires there as well. Now the entire van is wired by a van with these stupid things. I am slowly getting rid of them all, but it, it's a process, it takes time. The other thing about putting this battery box in was I had to move the pump. So all of this is mounted on a big flat plate. As you can see, it's now pretty tight in here, but it does all fit just. So the pump is now mounted on a flat plate and there's a bit of rubbish that I haven't got rid of and everything fits fairly nicely in here. Again, as per previous video, we do have a close under the bed. That's what we've done there. All right, I'm going to get this bed popped down and I will get my wife Stella in to talk about what we've done with the bed. All right, so now my wife Stella is gonna tell you about the bed. So when we first ordered the A-Van, we requested a inner spring mattress. And it is a double. Obviously, the different A vans have different sizes, so we've gone for the biggest we could get because Josh is quite tall. I'm 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 short, so we needed to find that middle ground. But yes, we got a inner spring mattress for it. Not quite what the comfort we were looking for, so we originally grabbed a just a mattress topper from Kmart, so that you know a little bit of padding on it just to take it off, but still wasn't quite enough. So we had a mattress topper from home that we've cut up and put on the top of it. And it is a memory foam one. So it has made a massive difference. Probably could go a little bit more comfier, which is why we're looking at getting a, a proper one made for it. Um, but if you're definitely 
doing a lot of traveling like we're hoping to do um comfort does pay so definitely look into having the right bedding for yourself all right everyone so that's our update video on the cruise liner it's a lot more comfortable to live in now now that we've got the batteries and the solar and the chargers we don't have to worry about power usage the standard battery with our lifestyle that we like to lead was a little bit small and obviously it didn't provide for 240 volt power we've got a solution for showering and toileting now again as i said i'll review the dual content in a separate video and we're pretty happy with it please don't forget to like subscribe and share this video click the bell so you don't miss out on any other uploads this has been josh and the family with ruby's tag along the honey pot Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> Alright, whenever you're ready.